All right, Darius. Hey there. Hey, how's it going? Going well, thank you. Thanks for having me on. It's been too long. Sure. It's good to see you. Yeah. Good to see you and, and the other participants. So, uh, well, let's see. Uh, I guess my thing is kind of more of a statement, but I, I think I could, there's a question in it too. And it's, I'll start by just saying I've been really enjoying the theme you've introduced sometime earlier this year uh, about moral authority. And uh, unfortunately, you had, you've had you had to introduce it in the context of Elizabeth Warren and more recently, this Gretna. Yeah, and AOC, I think I, did, I started with AOC too. Yes, yep. yes, yes. Thank you. So maybe it goes back before this yep. year. And, and uh, I mean, it's such a, an important theme and I'll just say in, in my, it resonates with me because in my profession, as, as you and some others know, I'm a financial advisor and I'm the chief investment officer of our wealth management firm. And, you know, I can kind of stand on my head and show people kind of analytical analysis of historical data. But ultimately, you know, I, I you know, you can't, how do you extrapolate that into the future? At some point, you know, you have to stand on your moral authority. Either people kind of take me as having integrity, honesty, objectivity, and 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 want to listen to my advice, or they don't want to. Yep. It just really comes down to that at the end. And so, uh, you know, so that so my question then is, um, uh, so besides those three who you spoke about, where moral authority has been strong for them. Who can you point to on the positive side besides yourself? And if I may add my little anecdote about myself a moment ago, you know, who can you point to on the positive side? Well, really besides objectivists, who can you point to on the positive side that you think does um, apply this power of moral authority in their approach? Well, I mean, you I think almost all successful bad guys do, right? Because that's how they become successful and that's how they convince people in a sense, not all of them, but 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 most of them. They they, particularly uh, you know those who are better who have an ideology that they're trying to project. So certainly, religion, religious leaders project this moral authority very well. Again, in the in the service of bad ideas, but but uh, but do it well, um, and uh, and have throughout history. When I uh, when I talked about Greta, I, I talked about Joan of Arc and. You know, Joan of Arc's a good example in history. And, and people, I think, thought that I view Joan of Arc as a positive person. And therefore, when I compared it to Greta, they thought I was talking positively about Greta. And no, I view Joan of Arc as a, as a mystic widow. I mean, she, she was nuts, right? And, uh, and, and Joan of Arc was, 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 was horrible. And I, I, don't, I, I, can't, I can't remember enough history to know if there were good guys and bad guys in the war between the English and French. But knowing the English and knowing the French... And knowing a little about a bit about ancient, that period in European history, my suspic strong suspicion is no, there are no good guys there. They're all bad guys, and who cares who won that war? Um, so, I, so I think all of those, um, uh, you know, Churchill, you know, as a positive example, think of Churchill. Mm. Um, think of think of kind of the moral authority that he exhibited, the kind of the certainty, the we are the good guys, they are the bad guys, we will win, we just need to stay determined and kind of a, a confidence, a self-esteem, but a certainty about the virtue of the fight and the, and the value of what they were fighting for. So yeah. that would be a good positive example. I, even, more I, I mean, so I'm, I'm moving up. I mean, I'd start Reagan to some extent, mm -hmm. right? Uh, you know, Mr. Gorbachev, tear down this wall is certainly an example of, of a certain, uh, in calling the Soviet Union um, an evil empire. Now, I think he undercuts himself in other issues, but I think at least in some of his speeches, he certainly exhibit that kind of moral authority, moral certainty, uh, moral courage uh, to stand up to evil. I mean, the, the, the sad state of affairs today is that not many people like that, right? Uh, on, the, on the good guy's side. Right. Um, there's some objectivists, there's some free market people, um, but I just don't see that many people stand up for good stuff, for good ideas and using kind of a, a moral platform to do it on. And, and you know, so using morality in, in that way, um, I'm just trying to think, I mean, business leaders, uh, 
I mean, it's sad. Imagine if, imagine if uh, Zuckerberg, I mentioned this the other day, if, if he'd stood up in front of Congress and I don't accept your authority to ask me these stupid questions and walked out. That would have been exhibiting kind of moral courage and moral certainty. In, uh, but he, he really didn't do that, right? He did the opposite. He cowered before them. Um, I mean, I'm sure in business you see it a lot, right? To your example is a good example. And I'm sure in the context of it, I think Steve Jobs did. Steve Jobs had this ability to say, I stand behind this. And, and this is going to be good. And I'm certain of it. And I, he conveyed it with a, with a certain self-esteem and a confidence and everything that I think people, people bought the product because Steve Jobs said and put his whole persona behind it and, and people bought into it. And I think a lot of that was about his moral certainty and in, in the righteousness of what he was doing. Um, and I think most business leaders to be very successful in business have to convey that to the, to the, employees, their customers, their clients, to the, to the people around them, you know, we have integrity, we're honest, and we know what we're doing. You know, we're confident in what we're doing. And, and so, I, I, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to think if there are any other examples out there uh, on, on the good guy side. I just don't see that many, that much of it. I mean, among intellectuals, you see it. You see people standing up to the status, standing up to socialists, but but just not a not a huge number. Nobody super influential. Thank you. Um, you know, uh, yeah. I mean, any anybody. I mean, I'm thinking of Jordan Peterson. I mean, Jordan Peterson is very successful, and part of that success comes from his sense of certainty about certain things and, and, and sense of, you know, he believes in right or wrong and he has this, he conveys this. Now, I don't agree with him on how you define right or wrong, but some of at least what he says, I mean, he conveys in a way that, that is, gives it a certain moral weight. Um, uh, and that comes through when you uh, debate socialists and a lot of these other people is they dither you actually come out sounding very, uh, very solid. Yeah, no, absolutely. I think, I think that's right. I think the, the socialists, particularly, they, they tend to be, they, they tend to change their positions. They tend to move because they, they don't have a solid ground. They don't have a clear idea. There are very few, on a, uh, there are very few that really get it morally. Um, yeah, you know, this is why I think AOC and Greta are unique because I think they, they have the ability to frame issues in terms of morality. Um, and not just in terms of, well, this will work better than that. I mean, if my socialist pal, you know, that my socialist opponent and my, my capitalism socialism debate had framed it from a more uh, moral perspective, I think he would have done better because he would have appealed to the audience altruism, which is already there. And indeed, when he gave them sob stories, when he talked about, oh, people, you know, don't have health care and the poor people and, you know, the, that's when he got a positive response. So, you know, the right way is not to talk about, oh, socialism could be successful because of this or that. The right way, if I was a socialist and I was doing this, I would talk about the altruistic duty to help, to help the poor and socialism. You know, maybe it doesn't work, but it's the right thing to do and it's the right mechanism by which to do it. So, um, yeah, I mean, that differentiates the, the ones who are good at it and the ones who are not so good at it. Now, there are many philosophies that would offer that to an individual. Oh, yes. There are religions that offer it. There yes. are forms of government that offer it. How does... Not forms of government. That's politics. That's a different branch. That comes later. Well, yes, but governments in some areas, in some instances, would define for you choices or dictate oh. to you oh, yeah. how to live your life. Yeah. But I'll retract governments and just say religions are yeah. philosophies. Aren't? How does objectivism differ from the philosophies that many of us have been exposed to in our youths? Uh, philosophies based upon religions, theologians, dogmatists. The f very first difference. Uh, objectivism tells you that it is not right, it is not proper to men to take anything on faith. Religion is a matter of faith. You accept a religion emotionally or because you were born to it. 
you have not chosen it rationally. What objectivism will tell you is that reason, man's reason is his basic means of survival. That is the most important faculty which he has, and he has to guide his life and make his choices by means of his rational faculty. Mm -hmm. He has to make his own choices, but he has to know how to make them. It is immoral for him to act on his emotions, to be guided by the whim of the moment. That objectivism holds as very wrong, very immoral. And morality, in fact, consists of following your reason to the best of your ability. So that rationality is the basic virtue from which all the others proceed. Using the super chat, and I noticed yesterday when I appealed for uh, support for the show, many of you stepped forward and actually uh, supported the show for the first time. So I'll do it again. Maybe we'll get some more today. Um, if you like what you're hearing, if you appreciate what I'm doing, then I appreciate your support. Uh, those of you who don't yet support the show, please take this opportunity. Go to iranbookshow.com slash support or go to subscribestar.com, Iran Book Show. And, um, and and make a kind of a monthly contribution uh, to keep this uh, to keep this going. I'm not sure when the next.